So God will never give you what you pray for. The first principle is this. He will give you what you can manage. That is the reason why I always say management is better than prayer. Some people go mad with that, but that's how it is. Management is always better than prayer. If you can manage properly, your prayers will automatically be answered. Even the things that you do not pray for, God is going to bless you with. Because God cannot stop blessing people. God always blesses people. With tithing, God wants you to teach you management. What he wants you to learn is this. Can you be consistent with 10% of your earning in giving away? Can you be consistent? I know many people give, but they're not consistent. I know many people give, sometimes they forget. I told you forgetting won't bring you your blessing. God asked 10% to be kept aside for his work because it is about discipline. This act is about disciplining and your ability to control your will. Whatever might look trash for you is really valuable in God's eyes. Even for people, I'm telling you, some people think they are so trash, man. They think they are invaluable. I'm telling you, you probably are the most valuable person in the whole world. God wants to pick you up. Hallelujah. Where did I stop last week? This is where I stopped. That the divine goal of mankind is to extend the culture of the heaven on earth. The divine goal of mankind, and I have given you a few principles of heaven principles regarding work. The first one is God protects his resources from bad management. The second one is God withholds resources from bad management. God won't allow growth where there is bad management. Fourth one is God will never answer a prayer from a bad manager. And I have finished with this statement that management demands work or God demands work. And religion makes you lazy. Why? Because religion makes you believe in miracles and God wants you to believe in work. If you have seen last week, that is the first command that God has given to Adam. Even if you, once I was teaching on the four principles that God has given to Adam and in those four blessings, the first blessing is be fruitful. Being fruitful is really important. I'm going to talk on that probably later down the weeks. So I want you to open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16. And let's look at verse 4. Because last week we have seen the rest of the verses, I think, hopefully. A wicked and an adulterous generation looks for a sign, but none will be given to it except given to it to them except the sign of Jonah. That means most of us we look for a sign, we look for a miracle, we look for something, but God is saying, do not look for a sign. If you're looking for a sign, maybe you're not from me. You're from somebody else. And then we finished it saying, God is upset with lazy people. If I ask you to raise your hand, if you're lazy, I'm pretty sure nobody will agree that you're lazy. But uh, I want to make sure that, you know, God cannot work with lazy people. So you need to push yourself whenever you feel like tired. Whenever you feel tired, whenever you feel like giving up, God says, just keep on moving. Turn to your neighbor and say, keep going. The second, uh, we are going to deal with another sub-subject. It's called management and prayer. Everybody say that. Management and prayer. So God will never give you what you pray for. The first principle is this. He will give you what you can manage. Everybody say, manage. So, that is the reason why I always say management is better than prayer. Some people go mad with that, but that's how it is. Management is always better than prayer. If you can manage properly, your prayers will automatically be answered. Even the things that you do not pray for, God is going to bless you with. Because God cannot stop blessing people. God always blesses people. Are you able to understand that? God is not somebody who likes to withhold his blessings from people. God always likes to bless his people abundantly. My dear brothers and sisters, remember, you're the one who has limited resources, but God is the one who, ha who has unlimited resources. In order to tap into those unlimited resources, you should never be... Ah, smart people. Yeah, you should never be... All right, so in order for you to exceed, in order, in order for you to do exceedingly well, God wants you to take care of the things that he has given you. You, you might be praying for a one lakh income every month. God is asking you, what are you doing with the 10,000 rupees that I'm giving you right now? You say, God, I bought 2,000 rupees jeans pant, 1,500 rupees shirt, 500 rupees haircut. Out of 10,000, 4,000 gone. How much is remaining? 
Well, 6,000 is remaining. What do you do? You put 50 rupees as an offering. God says, what about the tithe that I am going to, that I have taught you about? I am going to teach you about tithing also today. It is going to release you into greater, greater things. So, you pray for more, but God is saying, what are you doing with the things that I have given you already? What are you doing with the things I have given you already? You pray for a big house, God is asking you, what are you doing with the present house that you're living in? I have spoken about, the, about my house, how I got my house in the second service uh, last time. So remember, I, I started taking care of the rented house that I was living in. My house owner came only twice in four years. That's how well I took care of it. He did not even cut one rupee when I was exiting the house. He paid me the full amount, the full refund, Never you see full refund being paid. But my house owner, he paid me a full refund because I have taken care of the house. So, the first one is, God will never give you what you pray for. He will, he will only give you what you manage. What are you managing? How are you able to manage your clothes? Some people get too fat. God is saying, take care of your body. Why? Because when you get too fat, you know, this, these are things that happens. Our clothes won't fit. What you need to do? You need to buy new clothes. The point is, it's not, you're, 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 when, you, when you grow fat, your health is also being destroyed. Many people say, pastor, because of certain, certain disease, that's the reason why I'm growing fat. I'm telling you, do not make that an excuse. Look at the root of the problem and pluck that out. Are you understanding? For example, some people say, pastor, I have a thyroid problem. That's the reason why I'm growing fat. I am telling you, do not make thyroid your excuse. Let no excuse reign over your life. Remove the thyroid from your life. Amen. I don't know whatever it takes. You can just Google it, research it, go deep into it. I'm telling you, even your doctors might not know. Your, what is that English doctors? What do they do? What do they treat? What is that medicine? Allopathic. Even the allopathic or Ayurvedic, they might not know. You can be your best doctor. Are you understanding, church? Use the wisdom that God is going to give you. Start researching in and God is going to help you. So why doesn't God give you more? Because that is his resource and he wants to protect his resource from you. I'm going to repeat that again. God wants to protect his resource from a bad manager. So if you want to be a bad manager, God cannot bless you. Why? Because that is his resource. Are you understanding something today? Never, never Expect a bad manager to be blessed. So, the reason why God also cannot give some people their own business. Today, I'm, I'm talking with all the entrepreneurs who have this entrepreneur mindset. If you want God to give you your own business, start taking care of other people's businesses and God is going to give you your own business. Start taking care of other people's businesses as if it is your own business. Are you understanding something? So that is, how, that is how God gave me this church. I always take, when I, when I, I mean, after I left my dad's church in Vizac, I came over here. Whichever church I went to, I started taking care of the church as my own church. You won't believe some of the things that I did. The church starts by 9. I never go by 9. I go by 8.30. I, want to, I go and talk to the pastor. Pastor, is there something that I, I can help with? I have a lot of plenty of time that I'm free. Pastor is amazed. The pastor doesn't know that I'm asking all these so I can be blessed. Amen. The pastor, it is a blessing for him as well as a blessing for me. That is really important for you to understand. Why? Because God is an economist. The second point I want you to understand is this. God is an... Nobody told you that. God is really an economist. You know, he never blesses somebody just like that. He wants them... What does an economist do? He wants to bring the maximum output out of the... Minimum. Everybody say, get the maximum out of the minimum. That means, out of 100 rupees, what can you do? Plan that. Do not think, Array, I have only 100 rupees. No, 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 no. God doesn't want you to think like that. God wants you to think, out of 100 rupees, what can you do? That is the point with us. Array, one day, if I'll be rich, then I will do this. God is saying, no, no, no. With everything that I've given you right now, what can you do? My dear brothers and sisters, getting the maximum out of the minimum. The average person in this building is not an economist. That's the reason why our lives are not so good. 
the reason why our lives are not so good is because they do not know the value that that you have inside you you never know the value that god has put inside you in order for you to discover the value you need to start respecting yourself are you understanding church you need to start respecting yourself i'm not talking about ego egoistic respect i'm talking about respecting your hands your legs your brains some people they never use this part of the body they only use the bottom part of the top part <laughs> we use too much of a mouth we never use this god is saying use that efficiently everybody say efficiently so you pray to god saying you're broke but god is asking what is that you are doing with your stove in the kitchen you are saying god i am broke i am literally broke god is telling you what are you doing with the time that i have given to you after uh, pass, god after after work i am tired i am tired man yeah? god is saying i have taken rest only for one day that to after the work is completed are you understanding solomon says go work in the morning again in the evening go to your work we all miss it we all think are why should i work in the evening solomon you know how much wealthy solomon is you have no idea <laughs> i have no idea that's how wealthy he is you cannot even measure the wealth of solomon but god says that same guy says the most wealthiest person on earth says the most wisest person on earth says go work in the morning in the evening go work in the evening what do we do after work we come home take a shower hot shower nice if they tie lungi love lungi or else shorts macha let's watch some tv huh? god says luke 16:10 you have your bibles underline that right whoever can be trusted with a little can also be trusted with and whoever is dishonest with very come on little will also be dishonest with what do we understand this with this now do you know why your prayer is not being answered i don't know pastor still not able to understand well you're dishonest with the time that god has given to you first you know if you really want to better your life i i would like you to start with this tip always be on time be on time the second point is always be honest with money everybody say money yeah that's where it is that is where it is remember that time man if you are you, these are like, like your two legs okay one is time one is money one leg can't go like this another leg can't go like this both need both need to go in the same way if you are dishonest with money but if you are honest with time mm -mm. legs will tear apart i cannot explain what will happen if you are honest with money dishonest with time again legs tearing apart do you want your legs to be torn apart no no pastor i don't want then what you need to do well be diligent with time and money everybody say time and money whoever can be trusted with little everybody say i god make me to be trusted with little no that's that's a wrong prayer okay this is what you need to pray god test me so i can be trusted with a little once i was I, i i was working for a millionaire okay a lady as soon as i got in america she came to pick me up she was my boss she she came to pick me up she said honest that was uh, during november time so she was talking honest what is the challenge that you want to have next year then i said well i want to be tested with money that's what i said she said what yeah i said i want to be tested with money that means i need some money so i can be honest with that and i can give back in give back in an honest way i want some something to happen like that in my life so god can know that i can be trusted she thought i was crazy but i showed her it's not craziness you should love to be tested because that's when you're proving to god that you can be trusted are you able to understand church my dear brothers and sisters whoever can be trusted with little everybody say little so it always starts with little it never starts big it never starts big it always starts with little and 
An answer to your prayer is regulated by your capacity to manage what you already have. An answer to your prayer, this is something I can teach, with, teach on for a whole year. That's how deep the subject is. An answer to your prayer is regulated by your capacity to manage what you already have. So do not worry about what you do not have. Am I confusing you with my tongue twist? Nothing, right? Do not be confused with all what you do not have. Do not ask for what you already do not have. Do not ask about the things that you do not have in your life. Manage the things that God has already given to you. Amen. So the reason for David's blessings is this. Look at 1 Samuel 17, 20. I know when you read this, nobody can find anything much great, but I'm going to explain it to you. Then you're going to find it great. Early in the morning, David left the flock with a shepherd and loaded up and set out as Jesse had directed. David was guarding some shepherds, right? David was shepherding some shepherds. Jesse came looking for David. Hey, Jesse, uh, David, why don't you take this carriage and give it to your brothers in the, in the camp? Then you know what David did? He took the flock of shepherds Shepherds, I mean the flock of sheep, and he kept it with the shepherd. He did not leave the flock of sheep, but he was so responsible enough that he took care of the sheep before he left that area. The reason why I'm giving this example is because many of us, when we have another work, we leave this work. When somebody, your, your manager calls you, you leave this work. You do not leave this work. You make another person responsible or you keep that as a reminder so that you can do it again after this work is finished. That's a really important key for you to get your blessings. Remember that church. Remember that very much. We forget things. Forgetting is not a blessing. David did not forget his flock. Amen. David took care of his Remember that. So that is the reason for David's blessings. What happened to this kind of behavior? A shepherd boy turned into a king. I told you it all starts with little. Where is a shepherd boy? Where is a king? He actually became a boy king. My dear brothers and sisters, if you can, trust it, if you can be trusted with little, everybody say, turn to your neighbor and say, do not try for much. Take care of the little. So, money is actually easy to get. I have told you many times, I know many people do not believe it. I even start thinking of how much money I make. It's really hard to believe, but that's, that's true. That's how God designed it. It's really, I do not even think of how much money I make. Why? Because I am following in the system that God has designed. For example, you never really worry about how a seed is going to turn into a sapling. The seed automatically turns into a sapling. The sapling automatically turns into a tree. Right? You never worry about that. that why? Because that system is already there in place. That is exactly how God wants you to function. God has already put, put you in a system. God has already put you in a track. All you need to do is walk in that system. Amen. Now, come to, coming to tithing. I know many people are paying their tithes, but this is how you need to pay your tithes. This is how you're going to get your blessing. Remember this. Tithing has nothing to do with, God, with you giving God some money. Many people think tithing means I am going to give my hard-earned money to God. God, take it. My work is done. Wrong. Wrong. God doesn't need anything from you. You need to remember that. First point, he is he functions independently. He doesn't need your provision. He can run on his own provision. He can create his provision. Remember that. Okay. Now, why did God keep this tithing? Well, God, when, before you, we go to that, you need to understand this concept. When God sets something up, it is not because he needs it, but it is because the product needs it. I'm going to repeat that again. When God sets something up, God never sets that up because God needs it, but because the product inside that environment needs it. 
For example, before God made man, God made the earth. God made the air, oxygen, carbon dioxide, trees, everything. Then he created man. Now the reason why he created man, air, trees, birds, everything is so that one product needs the other. In the same manner, God has kept tithing into you, into mankind, not because God needs it or the church needs it. God has kept tithing inside mankind because the mankind needs it. Now I'm going to show you how. Do you know that 100% of everything belongs to God? Right? 100% of everything. The chair that you're sitting on, the light, the trees, the fan, the air, everything. The chair that you are sitting on also came from the earth. It did not come from space. It came from the earth. Everything belongs to God, including your breath. Now, with, with tithing, God wants you to teach, teach you management. What he, wants you to te what he wants you to learn is this. Can you be consistent with 10% of your earning in giving away? Can you be consistent? I know many people give, but they're not consistent. I know many people give, sometimes they forget. I told you, forgetting won't bring you your blessing. Some people say, oh, Ray, I forgot. No, that, that forgetfulness won't bring you a blessing. Can you be consistent enough with your 10%? God asked 10% to be kept aside for his work because it is about discipline. Nobody taught you this, I know. This, is, this act is about disciplining and your ability to control your will. I know. Many times we are always tempted to keep the 10%. I know, I know. But that's where God checks. I told you, time and money. God checks you whether you are consistent. Why does he want you to check with 10%? Because... If you can be trusted with 10%, you can be trusted with 90%. Amen. That's where, how God checks. If you can be trusted with little, you can be trusted with... Hallelujah. So what does tithing teach you? This is what it teaches you. First one is accountability. Tithing teaches you accountability. Are you responsible enough to acknowledge who gave it to you. If you look at the communion that Jesus shared with his disciples, he always took the bread, he gave thanks to the Lord. Why did he do that? So he could credit the person who gave it. Tithing teaches you accountability. Tithing teaches you discipline. Really important, discipline. Tithing teaches you honesty. Are you honest? Nobody watches you. You need to be honest with yourself. Nobody knows how much you're making. You need to be honest with yourself. Amen? Tithing teaches you diligence. God wants you to do it continuously. Diligence means continuously, without stopping. So that you do not steal the 10%. Are you not stealing 10% every day? That's good. If not, you're stealing. Fifth one is faithfulness. Everybody say faithfulness. Hmm. Well, are you faithful enough with what God is giving you? Some people say, Pastor, how can I be faithful? God is the one who should be faithful. I need not be faithful. Well, it's up to you. Sixth point is trustworthiness. Everybody say. So are you, are you the same with the little increase? The little increment? Once you were earning 20,000 rupees, so you used to give 2,000 rupees at tithe. Now God has suddenly incremented that salary, 40,000. 40,000 means 4,000. Oh my God. If you cannot be trusted with 40,000, 4,000, God cannot be, God cannot bless you with 1 lakh. Are you understanding something, church? Now let's all open our Bibles to Mark chapter 6 and I'm, I'm going to close the service for today. All these, I have given you the good characteristics of, of a good manager. So, Mark chapter 6, verse 39 to 43. 
Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and you know what that shows? That shows administration. A lot of people were there, but God said, if it was us, we'll say, ah, bed job, bed job. God doesn't, didn't say like that. God said, everybody break into groups, break into smaller groups and sit in groups. Why? Because when you sit in smaller groups, it is easier to be served. Look at Jesus, man, the greatest administrator. Verse 41. Taking the five loaves and two fish. What, are, what is that five loaves and two fish? Resources. We see a resource manager here doing his work, okay? What are those five loaves and two fish? Resources. Everybody say? Resources. Looking up to heaven, he gave thanks. What does that show? He gave thanks to the one who gave it. He was crediting the correct person. Amen. Why? Because that is his resource. He gave thanks to the Lord. Man, what a beauty in this. He broke it. He broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. What does that show? Delegation. And supply chain management. God, Jesus, oh, I need to, you know, I, I was the one who broke it. Let me only give. God says, delegated it, delegated it. You take one basket, you take one basket, you take one basket, you take one basket. He delegated everything. Everybody say, delegation is important. He also divided the two fish among them all. How many fish? Jesus did not eat first. A leader never eats first. I need to hear that a little more, okay? A leader never... You know, that's the reason why whenever we sit in groups, I know, this is very obvious, whenever I sit, they first bring it to me. But do you know what I do? I say, start from there. Start serving from another person. Start doing it from another person. If I'm sitting on the table and I have a friend or a, or a relative and my wife is making some dosas, you know, usually when they put them do some dosas, there will be some time. I give it to my friend or my relative or to my somebody who works with me. I say, you eat. I'll wait, no problem. The next to those, then I eat. Then again, I wait. You eat first. What do we do? Full. All pieces should be in my plate, brother. Take the rest. They all ate and were. Everybody say. What does that show? Faithful and trustworthy and huh? come on, somebody can give me a better word. They all were satisfied. Customer satisfaction. I understand it. Jesus made sure that his, that his clients, his disciples, the people who came to listen to him were Amen. We don't care about that. Go, go to hell. God says, no. Customer service is really. That's the reason why you never know how much time it takes to spend. Take grill to, mess, to make messages. That's why every message is so precious to me. I can teach with confidence. Without a doubt. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. What? 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 Let's stop there. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of 
broken pieces what is that called trash collection what is that for us it is trash this is going to blow your mind but for god it is a resource amen whatever might look trash for you is really valuable in god's eyes even for people i'm telling you some people think they are so trash man they think they are invaluable i'm telling you you probably you are the most valuable person in the whole world god wants to pick you up hallelujah god wants to pick you up i think we need a little more talk on this line maybe next time trash collection cleaning our community cleaning our surroundings that's the reason why i want my bathrooms even in the church in my, even in the school i want them to be nice clean clean it should not be dirty this country is built on a culture of throwing away our waste god says don't throw it away jesus showed that waste should be collected everybody say waste should be amen do not throw it away so with this i would like to close this sermon today now from next week onwards we are going to start hearing christmas sermons amen probably messages which you have never heard before i am going to show you different angles of jesus christ i am going to start teaching you why jesus actually came down what what does christmas really mean it is not you going to relatives or it's not you making pancakes and cakes and pakoras and jalebi christmas is really different christmas is something different let's all close our eyes close the ser- sermon then we are going to close the service in some time oh my dear father we thank you for this day we thank you for your message that you have given to us we thank you for teaching us something valuable impacting our lives changing our lives making it grow father we thank you for the beautiful time that you have given to us oh lord as we look we are looking forward to this christmas season oh lord let there be great things done in our lives let there be a wholeness and a completeness in our lives oh father let this message be implemented in our lives in jesus mighty name we ask and pray amen